In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome, everyone, to Our Lady of Las Vegas Church this Sunday, which is the 25th Sunday of Ordinary Time in the Church's liturgical calendar. We gather on this Lord's Day to celebrate our faith, to draw ourselves closer to Christ in this Eucharist, in our communion with him. Let us first of all acknowledge our sins now as we ask God to grant us healing, mercy, and forgiveness. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways and my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, life is Christ and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labors for me. And I do not know which I shall choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into the vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, the landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You too go into my vineyard, and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon and around three o'clock and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others standing around and said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They answered, Because no one has hired us. And he said to them, You too, go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought that they would receive more. But each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last ones worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who bore the day's burden and the heat. And he said to one of them in reply, My friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus, the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, in the days of uh, large traditional farming families, Work on the farm was shared by, by everyone. When the crop was ready for harvest, the whole family went out into the field working together. Now, of course, they didn't all work at the same pace. Dad and the, the older siblings would be in the field very early in the morning while the little ones were still asleep. And mom and the little sister would be in the kitchen preparing the meals for the day. And the other little ones would, would come out to work later. And everyone joined in the work. And at the end of the day, all of them would go home together. Supper would be ready, and everyone would start to eat. But then you ask, would, would anyone suggest that you could only eat as much as you worked? Would anyone say, oh, 
you only worked an hour, or, or you were just out there goofing off most of the time. No one would say that. Everyone had as much as they wanted, no matter how much they worked, no matter how long they worked. No one complained. No one was jealous. Everyone's happy. In the, today's gospel, we hear of a harvest in which some workers put in more work hours than others. And then when, when pay time came, they, they all got treated equally. But the ones who were hired first began to complain and grumble. Why do the workers in the vineyard complain and grumble, whereas the workers in the family farm do not? Well, the answer is that the workers on the farm, they're a family. They're workers, and the workers in Jesus' stories, well, they are unrelated individuals. So the, the norms of behavior in a family are a lot different than from those of uh, people in the wider society, individuals in the wider society. But the big question that the parable poses to us in the church today is, do we really see ourselves as family with a common purpose, or do we see ourselves as a bunch of individuals with our own agendas? We call ourselves brothers and sisters you know, in the church, but why then do, do we often see ourselves and treat one another as more than rivals and competitors? For the first hired workers, yeah, it was a business affair. Their, their working in the vineyard was preceded by a, a, a contract regarding their, their wages, a full day's work for a full day's pay. But the latecomers, well, they weren't so um, legalistic in their approach. They took the job trusting in the landowner in his word of honor because he said to them, you go work in the vineyard too and I will give you whatever is fair. So they went. In fact, those who came to work closer to the end of the day, well, they weren't told any, anything about payment. The man just said, why do you stand here idle all day? And then they said to him, because no one has hired us. And so he said to them, you go into the vineyard too to work. No talk about wages at all. God called the Jews a long time ago to be his people. And now, at this later time, God was also calling the Gentiles. This parable, Jesus is directing towards the Jewish people, and Matthew towards Jewish Christians as he writes his gospel uh, with them in mind. The Jews who have long been the chosen people of God, and he wants them to understand that all people who accept Christ are welcome at his table his table in a kingdom where all people, Jews and Gentiles, will be family. And the point that Jesus is making is that all are welcome into the home of our Heavenly Father, those who were long chosen through history and those who have only recent be, recently been called, because indeed we are all children of our Heavenly Father and we are all welcome to dwell in his kingdom forever. Please now let us profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father of all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen.
The Lord is near to us when we call, and so we call upon the Lord now with our needs and the needs of all of our brothers and sisters. For the mission of forgiveness in our church, that we may see the desire of Christ to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who feel abandoned by God or by the church, may they find it in their hearts to seek the Lord, for the Lord is near to those who do so with sincere hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For business owners, farm owners, and all those who employ others, that they may pay a just living wage to all who work for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For migrants and refugees who have come to our country for safety, for opportunity, and for a better life, that they may find all three in this country we call home. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For our Jewish brothers and sisters who on Monday observe Yom Kippur, the holiest day of the year, a day centered on repentance and atonement, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear For all who suffer any form of illness or infirmity, may they find relief from their pain, meaning in their struggles and healing in the body, mind, and spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are in need of God's grace, especially those who are enrolled in our community book of prayer, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, may they know the joy and peace of God's kingdom forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the deceased members of Carol and Lison families, for which this Mass is offered, and for all of our own personal intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O generous God, you extend your mercy to all who call upon you. Grant us the empathy and kindness to extend that mercy to others as you grant the prayers we make today. Through the one you sent us in mercy, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. 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 Please pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good all of his holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. 
For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through Christ, the host of angels adores your majesty, Father, and rejoices in your presence forever. So may our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalting praise as we now acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and you are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, George Leo Thomas, our Bishop, Gregory Gordon, our Auxiliary Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Remember the deceased members of the Carroll and Lezon families, and all who have died in your mercy, Father. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her beloved spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you, Father, throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. We're through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
now at our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, together let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us share with each other now a sign of Christ's peace to us all. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are those who are called now to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you so much, everyone, for celebrating Mass with us here at Our Lady of Las Vegas Church on this 25th Sunday of Ordinary Time. I thank all of our ministers who assisted at Mass, Teresa for being our lector, Mikhail for managing our cameras, Dave and Eva for lifting us up so beautifully in music. We thank you also for all of your, for, uh, your remembering us through your contributions and, and any ways you support us and, and, and through the ways you get that to us. Thank you so much, very much. And, and also, we also invite you to come and share Mass with us, celebrate Mass with us in person if you are able to do so here uh, at Our Ladies. And so now, if someone is celebrating a birthday or anniversary or something special going on in your life today or this week, uh, our best wishes, as always, to you. And if you are carrying a heavy burden or, or something you know, loading down your heart, please know that our prayers are with you always. And so as we go forth, let us walk with the Lord this week with his grace and blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is now ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Faithful prophet.